In the tapestry of global fashion, where colors dance and patterns weave stories of heritage and identity, one undeniable truth emerges. African fashion exudes vibrancy and style to such an extent that it serves as a source of inspiration for European fashion. Its trove of colors, intricate patterns, and timeless traditions have captivated hearts and minds across the globe, becoming a muse for designers seeking to capture its essence. Yet, amidst the awe-inspiring fusion of cultures, a disconcerting narrative emerges, casting a shadow on the creative landscape. Accusations have persisted for many years, suggesting that major luxury brands have appropriated and stolen iconic designs from African tribes. Welcome, this is Rain Smith, and you're watching the new Africa channel. African tribes boast a treasure of striking aesthetics, symbolic motifs, and ingenious craftsmanship nurtured over centuries. These tribes, with their unique cultural identities, have inspired and influenced countless designers, contributing to the tapestry of global fashion. Yet, the line between appreciation and appropriation can sometimes be blurred, leading to replicating or misrepresenting indigenous designs. For example, Louis Vuitton, a prominent luxury brand, has faced accusations of purportedly appropriating elements from the Quile Mask of Africa to create its iconic monogram. While it remains debatable whether this resemblance is a mere coincidence or a deliberate source of inspiration for the brand, undeniable similarities exist between the two. In another instance, the Louis Vuitton Demir Bean pattern has been associated with the formal attire of the Cuba chief from the Congo Kingdom in Africa. The origins of this design and its relationship to the Cuba tribe have ignited discussions regarding potential cultural appropriation. Another notable example pertains to the Versace Greco print, which has been linked to cultural motifs of both the Cuba tribe and the Funbam tribe in Cameroon. Assertions have been made that the print takes inspiration from these tribes' distinctive cultural elements and designs. The Maasai people of Kenya and Tanzania represent a powerful symbol of tribal Africa, but unfortunately, their cultural identity has increasingly become a target for imitation. Numerous companies worldwide have been exploiting the iconic cultural brand of the Maasai, aiming to add a veneer of exoticism to their products and boost sales. One particularly recognizable example can be traced back to Louis Vuitton's 2012 spring and summer men's collection. The collection featured hats, shirts, and scarves inspired by the Maasai Shuka, a traditional African blanket characterized by vibrant shades of red and blue. In West Africa, the famous Ghana Musco bags originated in 1983 when the Nigerian government ordered Ghanaians, who were residing illegally, to leave the country. These individuals had little time to gather their belongings, so they packed their belongings into large checkered bags. These bags became known as Ghana Must Go Bags or Ghanaian Sacks. Years later, in 2013, the French fashion brand Céline incorporated the distinctive print of these bags into their autumn collection. This was supposedly done as a tribute to the movement and its significance. The collection featured various garments such as coats, shirts, skirts, and handbags adorned with black, red, and white, as well as blue, red, and white checkered prints. In 2007, the Ethiopian Intellectual Property Office demanded compensation from British fashion designer Matthew Williamson for replicating the Habesha Kemis, a traditional garment worn by Ethiopian women. The office expressed their discontent with Williamson's actions, emphasizing the cultural significance of these dresses, which embody the heritage, faith, and national pride of the Ethiopian people. The group firmly stated that nobody should have the right to appropriate and claim ownership of these designs. The process of design can be complex, as two individuals may draw inspiration from a shared source and inadvertently create similar designs. However, the challenge arises when it comes to African culture and designs, which possess a distinctiveness that sets them apart. It is important to acknowledge that people from different races and nationalities should have the freedom to explore and appreciate various cultures. Nevertheless, 
Issues arise when fashion brands utilize designs and unique patterns from other cultures without proper acknowledgement of their origins and further claim them as their own. Do you think designers should be free to use patterns and designs from other cultures without reference to their origins? Let us know what you think in the comments. Be sure to like the video, share, and subscribe to the New Africa channel for more exciting future videos.